Hey everyone! So today I'm going to be talking about the things that makeup artists do that you don't necessarily see. So these are the behind the scenes things that keep us busy, but are not the things that are done in front of you. So when you come and you sit down at your makeup appointment, there's so many other things that go into making that appointment happen. That's what I'm going to talk to you about. I'm also going to be talking about this from a personal lens. So for example, I run a bridal hair and makeup team. I also do other services such as lashes and brows and makeup lessons and things like that. So I'm going to be incorporating kind of how I personally run my business and what that means. But some of this stuff will be generally what a lot of makeup artists do as well. So let's get started. I'm just going to start with the least favorite task of most makeup artists. I've heard every now and then some people, they like it, they think it's soothing, but for the most part, we all hate it. Brush washing. So there's spot cleaning and there's deep cleaning. And if you want to know the difference between them, I actually have a really in-depth video telling you all about it, teaching you it, which I will link below and in the cards somewhere. So give that a look if you need that. But Brush washing is just so tedious. I actually added it all up in a note on my phone all throughout 2021. I did 15 hours of deep brush cleaning throughout the year, and it was a busy wedding season. I was constantly washing brushes. I'd come home from a Friday wedding, wash my brushes, do the Saturday wedding, come home from a Saturday wedding, wash the brushes, do the Sunday. It's like it was madness, okay? And it's one of those that when I'm done working a wedding, I'm tired. The last thing I want to do is stand more at the sink, tedious, just back and forth, washing a million brushes. I have eight complete brush sets. Each client gets their own brush set for sanitary reasons, and it just adds up. It's not fun. It's one of those things, it's a necessary evil that I love my job, I love what I do, I'm so lucky to be able to do this for a living, but everyone's got something, and that's my something. If I could just never wash brushes again, I would be very content. So, brush washing, it happens a lot. It's very necessary to make sure you guys are getting a very good makeup application and that it is sanitary for you. You do not want someone's musty, crusty makeup brushes on your face, trust me. Continued education. So people do this in different ways, different amounts, whatever they think is important to them. Um, I will say that I have seasons in my life that sometimes it's a season of learning more, sometimes it's a season of doing more. Kind of fluctuates year to year and I just kind of go with it. Um, I do try to stay up to date on trends, although I do mostly do makeup that is long-lasting and classic and not trendy because generally speaking on a wedding day you want to look like yourself and you want it to be timeless so that through the decades it doesn't say hey that was 2021 you know like to your kids or something so um but there's just different education whether it's how to be sanitary or trendy makeup just various things. Um, you just want to stay up on it. And there's also license requirements and things like that. Keeping up the website. So having a website is vitally important if you are an official business owner. It is the only thing on the web that you actually own. So if Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, everything just shut down tomorrow and you do not have it anymore, you don't have access because you don't own it, these are private companies, what else do you have? So you always have your website, you have your domain, it's really good for Google, it gets you ranked up more so more people find you. Um, I know for me, my blog is super important and helps me get ranked up um, and helps me communicate with you guys. And it's just really professional and really important to have. So constantly updating your website in a little fashion. Of course, I'm not doing it every single day, but there will be, again, seasons where I completely update all the photos in my portfolios, or I completely update the copy, or sometimes it's just, I love these two photos, I'm going to pop them in, or hey, I want to add a couple lines to that page. So it kind of, in some form of an, or another, you are updating your website on the regular. Legal things. This has been more prominent the last couple years than ever before, obviously because of COVID. There were a lot of us beauty pros and wedding pros in general and just pros in general that had to keep up with our contracts 
multiple times, multiple times when COVID hit. Um, just with all the changing factors. Personally, I had COVID waivers. Um, I was over here when we finally were given the okay to do makeup again. We are in your face. It was still brand new. We didn't know what was happening. We had all the PPE on, but we didn't want to be held responsible if someone were to catch COVID, even though we were doing all the precautions. So I had everyone sign COVID waivers. That was something I got through my attorney. Um, I had a couple contract updates, whether it's, you know, new COVID clauses, um, cancellation policies, um, the fact that now there's COVID testing and if a bride requires it, um, if there is a fee, we are not incurring that fee um, because even though the tests have been free for so long, I saw this coming. I knew that they would not be free forever. Um, and so here, you know, you have the home test kits and everything and everyone was going crazy buying them. So it was just a lot to keep up with to keep sure, keep sure, to make sure that we are safe, we are protected the client understands everything clearly and is also protected and just all of that good stuff. Additionally, I did have a couple new ventures the last couple years when I came out with my course. I needed, um, I think, a new like privacy policy and terms and condition page. So that's kind of a legal thing. And then um, when I came out with Emerge Cosmetics and I separated it into its own business, I made a couple contracts with my attorney um, for like influencer deals and wholesale accounts and things like that. So having a really good small business attorney is such an asset to any small business owner. I 110% recommend it. Do it. Make sure your stuff is legal. You never know what can happen. Be protected. Next, my most favorite on top of brush washing, taxes. Taxes, guys. The amount of taxes that small businesses have to pay is nauseating. Just simply put, nauseating. Um, <laughs> it's not fun, and it keeps kind of changing as you grow is the thing. So I started as a sole proprietor years ago, and then I became um, an individual LLC. Now I'm an S-Corp, and things just keep changing, like how much we owe in taxes, because also we're growing, so you pay more even if your expenses grow, like it's still, it's not a fun time. Taxes are not fun for anyone, but especially small businesses and in Connecticut, it's next level. Connecticut taxes us to death. So just got to keep up with it. Have a good CPA in your corner. Um, and my advice, keep up with it throughout the year, not just a tax season, because I see so many of my friends who do not. And then like, December, January, they're scrambling, or some people wait until April, like the deadline, scrambling to get everything, a whole year's worth of stuff together. No, no, not me. I could not. That's way too stressful. So I kind of keep up with it throughout the year with my bookkeeper and with everything that I do. Um, and I'm always in the know of like the numbers, like how much am I making? How much am I spending? Um, what am I spending it on? And how much do I have to put aside? Because let me tell you, the number one thing you have to prepare for with being a small business is putting enough aside for the IRS because they they want their money and they want it now. You will be messed up if you do not give them their money. So just remember that. <laughs> Emails. Guys, the amount of time I spend in my inbox. So I take all of the um, wedding and lash and brown everything inquiries through my website. It keeps my life a lot more organized. So when someone inquires through like Facebook or Instagram DM or something, I try to um, have them go through the inquiry so that I'm in my inbox and I make sure I'm getting back to everyone and nobody is falling beneath the cracks or between the cracks. Um, because if someone Instagram DMs me, it may not be seen or it may get lost because when I'm on Instagram, it's a different like mindset. Um, and I also can't physically like send you the attachments and things I want to maybe send you or you want to send me. So it's just so much easier to be in my inbox. Um, but I'm in it a lot. Um, this fluctuates, of course, too. Like right now, it's a slower season. It's winter. There's not as many weddings happening right now, although it is a good booking season. Um, once we're in the thick of it, mid-year, 
that inbox is constantly going, constantly popping um, with people who are currently having weddings and people are booking. It's a lot. So um, email is a vitally important task. Um, yeah. So emails, lots and lots of emails. But I am proud to say I will always get back to you in a very timely manner. <laughs> it's very important to me. Social media is a job in it of itself. So social media is really interesting for me. Um, I have a lot of fun with it, but it does come with a lot of stress. You know, it's, it's a job. And I think we really see that nowadays is there's social media managers, there's virtual assistants. Um, that's their full time income. There's influencers. Like we take them seriously now. 10, 15 years ago, we were laughing at people on YouTube. Like we were like, there's no way you can make that a living. That's, that's not a thing. And I always knew it would be. I've been on YouTube since I think 2008, 2009. Um, I always wanted it to be genuinely. And I'm, I'm trying to think of like ways that maybe I can explore um, some sort of influencer thing on the side and see like if that goes anywhere. Um, but overall, I just I have a lot of fun with social media. I really like connecting to you guys. So that's why I do a lot of video content. So you can see my personality and I can talk to you um, when we're not together. Um, so I love like Instagram reels and TikToks. You can see, you know, me be silly. I can educate you on a makeup product or I can inspire you for your wedding day, things like that. Um, so social media is very important. You have to be on social media to grow as a business nowadays. There, it's not like I can be everywhere at the same time and I can't um, post to everywhere as much as like the algorithms would like. But I like to say I do a nice mix and I think that it really resonates with my target audience, my clientele, the people that I am trying to reach. And so that's what means the most to me. So I do, I take days like today, and I sit down, I get ready, and I sit down for a few hours and I batch content. So I, I make a ton of reels or Insta, um, or TikToks, uh, a couple of YouTube videos. And so that way I have stuff to kind of spread out over the next few weeks and repurpose and use and all of that good stuff. But social media is vitally important for anything you're trying to grow online at all. So those are kind of like the general stuff that a lot of makeup artists do behind the scenes. Me personally, I also run a bridal beauty team. Like I said before, I run a hair and makeup team of about 10 artists. Um, and so that means whether it's trainings with them, um, setting up their trials and their wedding dates, making sure that they're available and that they can work with the client and just all the things that go into it. It's a lot of back and forth, a lot of communication with them, um, setting up calendar invites and just all of that kind of thing and making sure no one falls between the cracks. Like I have multiple ways of knowing when someone's going to be where. So I have like a Google Sheets, I have Google Calendar, I have Asana. I use different methods so that I know at any time like who is on what date with who. Like, what artist is working with what bride on what date? Um, because it becomes a lot. When you're doing, like, 50 to 100 weddings in a year and you have, you know, 10, 11 artists, you have to make sure that it's super clear. Everyone is in the know. It's a lot of being organized. But thankfully, I thrive on organization. I actually love it. So it works really well for me. But it definitely is a, a bit of work. Bookings in general, so weddings with the clients, again, through email, Zoom calls, phone calls, um, we're booking, I'm sending the contracts, sending the invoices, putting them in the system, making sure that all their questions are answered, booking people for lash and brow appointments because I do offer other services. So I do like makeup lessons in person and virtual. Um, I do lash lift and tints, facial waxing, brow tinting, brow lamination. So all of these things I am constantly booking or answering questions for. Lastly, and I think every makeup artist can agree with this, I am empowering people to be themselves. So something that's really important to me is that people don't use makeup as like a have to or it's a need. It's necessary. No, for me, makeup is a want. It's fun. It gives you confidence, but it's not a crutch. That's so important to me to radiate to my clientele. And I think um, my clientele really responds well with that. And I love that because I feel like we're vibing. Um, this is a big reason ever since the beginning of 2021, I have started going filterless on Instagram stories. I never use a filter anymore. 
Um, a lot of times I don't even have makeup on. So you see my acne, you see my lines, you see my dark circles, everything. But it doesn't mean you take me less seriously is the thing. And that's my exact point, is it's not necessary. You know I'm a makeup artist. You know I know what I'm doing. I show you and everything else, you know, the beautiful work that I post, the, the reels of me, like, doing what I did here today. Just things like that. Um, so... I thought it was so important that I do that, and it's really resonated with a lot of people, which I absolutely love, and it also has improved my mental health and made me just have a little more self-love, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, I just I want to empower people, give them confidence, see them shine, see them glow. At the end of the day, that is what I'm here for. That is my gift. That is my tool to use for you and serve you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got a lot of good information out of it. I am planning to write a corresponding blog with this video as well. So if you'd like it more broken down in written format, make sure to go to the links in the description bar and you will see it there. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys made it to the end and enjoyed everything that I had to say. You guys have been awesome all these years as you've watched me grow from an amateur person who's just like enjoying makeup to a full-blown professional makeup artist who runs a team and is really doing the dang thing. <laughs> this is my full-time income. Like it's still blows my mind. So just thank you so much for being along for the ride and I can't wait to see where it continues to go. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe for more beauty content, inspiring content, and me. <laughs> and I will see you in my next video. Bye.